Hi. If you're watching this, that means this was previously recorded and you are now watching a past version of myself. And this month, it's my goal to make as few past selves as possible. That's why this month's project is going to be making a live streaming YouTube video camera. Back in the day, I used to do a lot of live streaming, but that kind of died off after my YouTube channel got hacked in the middle of a live stream. That was so not cool. But I thought if I were gonna do live streaming again, it would be really convenient to have a dedicated camera that I could just click a button and it would live stream to YouTube. So that is the idea for this month's project. I also thought it'd be neat to have the case in the shape of the YouTube logo with the camera pointing at the front and a little microphone on the side. This project is a work in progress, so if you want to follow along, you can visit the project page over on Hackster.io. And Hackster.io is sponsoring this video, so as a thank you, I'm going to create a slogan for them on the spot. Hackster.io, where you can Hackster all day, every day. The core of this project, as you longtime viewers may have guessed, is going to be a Raspberry Pi. But this time the goal is to use a touchscreen LCD and to be able to write a program that utilizes it. It's also going to require some things like a power supply, a switching mechanism, but this is going to be the basics to get started with. The touchscreen LCD I'm going to be using is a 2.8 inch screen that I got from Adafruit. I chose Adafruit because they do a really good job of documenting how to use it, how to install it, and the open source code that they use to make it run. Now to install it, it's just going to sit right on top like this. And then on the software side, you can download a pre-made image from the Adafruit website that you should just be able to plug into your Raspberry Pi and turn it on and it should start working. Unfortunately, that didn't really work for me and I ended up having to install it myself. So I used the steps that you can follow here to download the Raspberry and operating system, put it in the Raspberry Pi, boot it up, and set it up for remote access. Then I used the steps from the Adafruit website to download a new kernel for the Raspberry Pi to make the LCD work. I chose not to set it as a console display and I also chose not to enable the button feature. If I'm going too fast, you can find step-by-step -step instructions and source code at the hackster.io project page. In order to push stuff to the LCD from the command line, I had to run this little frame buffer script. And to push an image to it, you can install the FBI program, download an image, and then run this script. By default, the touchscreen worked for me, but you can run this little Adafruit calibration script to make sure that it works for you. So now that we got the LCD and touchscreen capabilities working, let's write a program that utilizes it. I decided to go with Python because it has a nice Pygame library that allows you to write touchscreen applications. So create a new Python file and import these libraries. Then we'll need to set up the OS environment so that it projects to the LCD screen as well as enabling the touchscreen capabilities. Then we can initialize Pygame. Next, we'll set the display to an LCD variable and we'll also create a few different variables for colors. You also want to make sure the mouse visibility is set to false. Next, we want to define a function that can create buttons for us just by passing variables to it. And we'll create a little function that creates a random color so that we can fill the LCD screen with a random color. Now we can create a while loop that loops through the duration of the program and creates a menu button for us. Now we can create a for loop to see if the touch screen has been pressed. And if so, then it initiates an action. Also, we'll make it so that it changes the background to a random color whenever the screen is pressed. And then finally, we can update the display within the loop to show the constant changes. Now you can run the Python application and on your display, you should see something like this. And whenever you touch it, you should get a response. Okay, so I know that this is just a basic example of what you can do with the touchscreen, but it does show us the capabilities that we'll have for making a nice little touchscreen interface. In the meantime, feel free to take what I've shown you here and see how far you can get on your own. 
And if you make something cool, let me know about it in the comments below. All right, if you have any ideas that you'd like to see, you can submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com ideas. You can click here to watch more videos like this. And if you got any value out of my show and like to give some value back, please feel free to like, subscribe, follow me on social media, or donate at tinkernut.com donate. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com or hackster.io.